What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the PS5 career mode, this is episode number 17. And we start today's episode off with a look at our fixtures coming in November and the start of December as well. Just the three games in November, Wolves, Leeds and Manchester United. And you'll see the first three games of December today as well. Brighton, Crystal Palace and Everton away from home in the final month of the calendar year. And also briefly the league table as well. As you can see, the Red Devils still top right now as we enter November. We're in 14th place, 10 points on the board, 2 points clear of Watford after 2 wins in our last 3 games. As saw us propel up the table and try and climb away from the drop zone. And also a couple of ago I asked you guys to vote on what country we should scout alongside England this year I gave the choice of three Morocco United States and Wales and you guys voted for United States relatively close poll as well normally in my polls there's one one option that just like far exceeds the others but America win it uh, thank you to everyone for voting and also can I just say as well real briefly how frustrating is it now that we as YouTubers we as content creators we can't just run a poll on the actual video because in the past of course what we could do is just set one up there was a, a poll of four choices and all you'd have to do is tap on the screen or click on the uh, click on the eye in the top right if you will if you're on a, a desktop or a laptop and the poll would be there for you you wouldn't need to stop watching the video it wouldn't even pause I believe yet now we've got to go through the hassle of finding it in the description clicking on the link going to the third party website voting and then going back to it it just kind of it minimizes the amount of people that will vote and also it's just not as immersive it takes you away from the video you're watching you know so it's it's kind of frustrating like, I, I simply don't understand why YouTube took out that option man it makes no sense to me whatsoever because I again I used to run polls all the time that way you know be it you know what countries we would scout or what signings we would make what shirt numbers our players would wear and now I've got to go through the, the old uh, website go, you know go to go set up a poll on a different website which takes you away from the video very frustrating but that's my rant for the day over <laughs> but uh, still thank you for voting no, it's gonna be America that will scout uh, uh, alongside England this year so thank you for all the votes guys and also as you saw the Youth Academy there as we uh, started off uh, November Jesse Mitchell still seems like the best prospect right now only 59 rated but his potential is not dropping any lower than a 79 to 85 range so looks like a decent defence minded player either right back or centre back still for the first couple of games today uh, first we took on Wolves in a very drab goalless draw at the Client Prince Foundation Stadium worst game of FIFA 21 I've played so far guys gotta be honest they're really and I genuinely mean this still there was really no highlight worthy moments at all. Game got lost in the park. Very, very poor indeed. Goal is draw, but it does mean now we've only lost one game in our last four. Very nice run for QPR. And also three clean sheets in our last four as well. We certainly plugged the gaps after a very poor start to the season, particularly defensively. But for our second game of today's episode, they're taking on Leeds away at Ellen Road. We're still waiting for EA to add Ellen Road into the game via a patch as well. Uh, taking on the side, of course, we promoted two years ago. Last season, surviving their first year back in the top flight after so many attempts to get back into it. Taking on Leeds away from home. Had a golden chance to take lead in the first half. Charlie Kelman heading balls cross over the bar as it was still goalless. And then the second half, oh my word, the frustration. This is not the first time it's happened this season. It's like the second or third. And I've got to learn at some point. Seriously, learn from your mistakes sometimes you just got to press the circle button and hoof the ball clear you know if you if you, you guys have been watching me for a long time now you'll know I rarely ever just hoof it long I pretty much always try and play out from the back but you know the old saying you're taught this in junior football when in doubt kick it out simple as that but unfortunately there once again got our fingers burnt trying to play out from the back and keep it neat and tidy Rodrigo wins it back and scores the first goal then eight minutes later I couldn't have done much about that goal just outpaces Dickey and fires it past Liam Kelly for his second goal of the game in a 2-0 victory so yeah it was just one defeat in four but of course it's all about perspective whilst it's now two defeats in five it's also only one win in our last four games as well and so taking on Manchester United for our third game this episode as we know the Red Devils right now top of the table uh, clear of Burnley who are having an amazing season so far in second place also undefeated as well I was not looking forward to this game I felt for sure we taste defeat I decided to give quite a lot of fringe players chances in this game as I thought we'd lose regardless and we had a golden chance to take the lead right before the break. Stefan Bell made a great block on a shot earlier, but Chris Willock looking for his first Premier League goal, sent through down left-hand side, really should have hit the target and found the back of the net instead, but it wired the post as it was still 0-0. I knew for sure we wouldn't get any better chances than that one, and whilst we were defending pretty well, 11 minutes after the restart, the Red Devils a chance to take the lead. Mason Greenwood storms down the right-hand side, rolls it across, and Vlahovic is not going to miss from five yards, turns it in from close range and gives the Red Devils the opening goal of the game. 
as they get themselves in front. I have to say, all throughout the game, really, defended very, very well. Stefan Bell has been a superb pickup on a free transfer, but unfortunately, that was the only goal of the game in a 1-0 loss. And with a lot of rotation, uh, rotation to our lineup there, it wasn't actually a very damaging scoreline. In fact, we played pretty well in the game, just didn't take our chances, whereas the Red Devils did. One of the final score, they come through with the three points. And again, another defeat for us, which means as we close out November, the Red Devils stay top. But the table right now, 34 points on the board, three points clear of Pep Guardiola side in second and after a little bit of a poor patch of form we've now dropped to 16th place only clear of West Brom in 18th place on goal difference for our first 14 games. Yeah, officially a third of the way through the season now, just over a third of the way through the season, and unfortunately, whilst we did have a nice little streak of two wins in our last three games, unfortunately now, we're back to a familiar feeling of fearing the worst in every single game. Only above the drop zone on goal difference. Yeah, this is, this is what I was expecting at the start of the season, man. I mean, it's funny, because I remember at the start of the campaign, you know, I was thinking, can we play Sheffield United? You know, first season back in the top flight. Could we go and finish in the top 10 in our first season, despite the fact we had the bookies ferries to go down. Absolutely no chance. We simply don't have the quality. And as I said before, it's going to be tough to stay in this division. We are keeping our heads above the water, but only just. And so taking on Brighton for our first game of December here, away on the South Coast, needing a response after no wins in our last four games. 33 minutes in. Where have you been, my friend? Ilias Cher, finally, his first goal this season. Last year, player of the campaign. This year, he's really struggled to adjust to life in the top flight. First goal of the season, though, connecting with an Omar Richards cross. And right before the break, it was like deja vu. We send Omar down left-hand side. We know this guy's got blistering pace. He's up to 81 rated now, Omar Richards. The growth he's had since coming in from Reading at the start of last season. In fact, the first signing we made in the series has been incredible. And this is why Everton wanted to spend the big bucks on him in the summer. He's got so much pace. His end product is superb. What a ball to the centre from Richards and Lucas and Metcher. With his fourth goal of the season since coming on loan from Manchester City fires us two goals up right before the break. I've got to be honest, man, on a loan, yes, I know we're only paying 40% of his wages, but they're still pretty high. Regardless, he's been worth every single penny. I'm already thinking next season, if we do survive in the Premier League, I wouldn't mind bringing him back on a permanent deal. Regardless, still leading by two, and in the second half, Richards with a great piece of defending there. He was everywhere in this game, man, absolutely superb. But a few minutes later, Brighton would half the deficit and get back in the game. Nice little through ball into Unai Lopez, who finishes from close range to make the light last 20 minutes a little bit concerning but we would hold on for the victory and come through with a big pressure relieving three points no wins in our last four games but back to winning ways here on the south coast against an informed brighton side as we beat graham potter side by two goals to one where richards was just absolutely unbelievable in this game absolutely superb on both ends of the pitch especially when going forward two on the final score lord knows we needed that we were just above the relegation zone and now we go a few points clear Still following out, it's time for the scouting update and the academy update as well. Uh, Sally Nor from America looks good in the first month, but still plenty more months to go. And also some more scouting from England and look at the academy as well. Uh, as you can see our academy, I, I must say, I'm, I'm quite disappointed. You know, we haven't really had like a, an amazing, like really high prospect so far uh, from England, either from last season or this season as well. But there are still some decent players in there. Jude Fry, I must say, looks really good. Five star skills and 81 91 potential. Uh, Forster looks pretty decent as well, but as you see, I did decide to promote Jesse Mitchell uh, to the first team up to 59 overall. Uh, after he hits 60 overall, be able to check his potential. And again, he, he must surely have showing great potential at the very minimum. 79 to 85 potential, but that should provide it. And again, he's got, you know, height, six foot two, right back, centre back, high defensive work rate. I've got, I've got to say, he does look pretty decent indeed. And, you know, I said before, our centre backs, Johan Barbe is really good. Dickie ain't bad. Stefan Bell's coming in and look good as well on a free transfer. But I'd like a really good young prospect outside of Bogardi, who we signed to start this season and maybe Mitchell could be that guy I guess we'll have to wait and see we'll check his potential once he hits 60 overall still for the fourth game of today's episode back to the Kyle Prince Foundation Stadium to take on Crystal Palace aiming for back-to-back -back victories here and our first victory in a London derby this season well unfortunately Hodgson's side would take the lead right before the break Bull almost scored his first goal in the Premier League era firing that shot just wide and then right before half time oh my goodness gracious me shocking defending from yours truly there and not for 
for the first time this season. I slid into ground way too early, anticipating a shot. He just dribbled straight past me and banged it into the far corner. Crystal Palace in front, 1-0. As the visits take lead, Howard, 12 minutes after the restart, we get back on level terms. And he's done it again. Two goals in two games for Ilya Sher. Hadn't scored a single Premier League goal all season long until the one in the last game against Brighton. Then gets his second in two. It's been too long, man. Player of the season last year. I don't know why he struggled to adapt to the top flight so much. Kovalenko's done well uh, since coming in, but Ilias last season. Come on, mate. Come on. I know it's hard to make a step up. We need you, bro. Last year, you're our player of the season. I've got to get more out of you if we are to stay up this season. So, 1-1 one, one to final score and back-to-back -back games without a defeat as well. Good way to start December after a very tough month of November and for our sixth and final game of today's episode away at Goodness Park against Everton. Taking on Carlo Ancelotti's side. Uh, obviously, as we know, in real life, absolutely sublime start to the season for them right now. Made a couple of changes to my lineup heading into the game and 11 minutes in one of the guys getting a chance took it as well 12 minutes into the game I think it was actually Brian Brobby has been waiting and waiting and waiting for a start in the Premier League since coming in on a free transfer in the summer he finally gets one and he takes the chance as well he of course scored two goals on his debut against the Borough in the EFL Cup and 12 minutes into his Premier League debut gives us the lead as well and a few minutes later almost repay Luke Amos who got the assist there back healing to our midfielder who fires just wide and you would notice as well the uh, the lines I should say the arrows even coming up on the screen as well on the pitch um, it's so cool that you can now angle your players runs off the ball as well once you press the L1 button to send them on their way then flicking the right stick in the direction you want to run and they'll follow that path you know I I'm always very fair with VA as I always say I'll criticise them when they deserve criticising which is often times but I'll also give them praise when they deserve it as well that's a really good little immersive gameplay feature there to help you uh, make your players make intelligent off the ball runs when they don't do them automatically. Regardless, Sigurdsson would find level up for the Toffees and late on hanging on to a point here looking for their uh, late winning goal. Hamas Rodriguez denied by yet another great save by Liam Kelly who would hold on to a very valuable point there, an incredible one away from home against the top 10 side. Final score, Everton 1, QPR 1. Liam Kelly to thank for those two big saves right towards the end of the game in a very credible score draw away at Goodison Park and whilst it is only one victory in our last seven games, not a great run of form, no losses in our last three and a couple of good results away from home against top 10 sides as well. As you can see right now, league table, 16th place, four points off Watford and West Brom in 18th and 19th place. We still have a heads above water approaching a halfway point, but there's still a very long way to go. But that was this episode of the PS5 career mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for next episode as we close out December with our final four fixtures of 2021 very soon.